Hey man, are you ready to biggity bounce bounce that session in Pro Tools? <laughs> Stop doing it wrong, man. What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Wavy Wayne from WavyWayne.com, and this channel is all about helping you to record and mix better and faster. So, if you're looking to learn how to bounce your song the correct way from your Pro Tools session, you are in the right place. Let's just go ahead and jump right into Pro Tools so we can take a look at everything that we need to do to make sure that we get in those perfect bounces every single time. So I got a Pro Tools session uh, pulled up here and you know, I'm in the middle of a mix, a rough mix, whatever it is that you might wanna call it, okay? First thing I need y'all to write down, take a note of this. First thing is to actually set the bounce range based on the timeline selection, okay? So Pro Tools doesn't know where to start and end the bounce unless you tell them. Now, if you just bounce the project without actually dictating the start and end range, something will bounce. Is it gonna be what you want? You might have a little time in the beginning, maybe some extra time at the end, and it's not gonna be exactly what you want. So. Again, one of the main things as an audio engineer that we want to always practice is being intentional with all of the things that we do inside our session, including setting the range for the bounce. So if this is going to be the end of my song, one thing that I like to do is actually create markers. So even if this might have a little bit of tail, I'm going to set my grid to uh, be a quarter note so I can get a couple of little uh, uh, seconds after that tail just to make sure any reverbs or delays that are happening can fully live out. Now that I have set that, I'm going to go ahead and hit enter on the numeric keypad. This is going to allow me to make a marker so I can mark the end of my session. And I'm going to take my cursor over to the very beginning of my session. And I'm going to also add a marker there um, <laughs> and call this the start of the session. All right. So uh, another way to set those markers, you could have just went straight to your markers ruler and hit that plus button. And you could have hit a start marker and an end marker. Now that I have those markers, I just want to make a timeline selection from the beginning to the end of my session. I'll do that by simply clicking on the first marker, holding down the shift key and clicking on the last marker. All right. Now that I have that selected, I am good for my um, selection range for my bounce range. Anything outside of this timeline selection is not going to be bounced. Now, let's take this a step further. You will also notice that I have not just a timeline selection, but I have an edit selection. That's because there is a feature in Pro Tools called Link Timeline and Edit Selection. Whenever that's enabled, I could ultimately make a edit selection and it will be mirrored in my timeline and vice versa. But when that's turned off and you need to make sure that you're aware of this, because if that is turned off by going up to the options menu, and choosing link timeline and edit selection. If that's off, you can have a t edit selection and a separate timeline selection, okay? If you have that, the functioning, if you have your session functioning like that, then what's actually gonna bounce down is gonna be your timeline selection and not the edit selection. Remember in Pro Tools that when you're playing back and recording or bouncing down, it's gonna be based off the timeline selection, not your edit selection, all right? But by default, we just wanna always just keep this linked together to make it super easy for us. So I'm gonna go ahead and make sure that I got my selection right. Let's go over to the mix window and check out a couple of things here. Something else to consider is that when you're bouncing down, only the audible tracks will be included in the bounce, okay? Now, what does that mean? Only the audible tracks, only tracks that I am hearing during the bounce down will be included. So, for example, if I, if I just uh, solo this track and then I hit bounce, if I can only hear this track, that's the only thing that's going to be included in my bounce. If any tracks are muted, those tracks will not be included in my bounce. So whatever you can hear will be included in your bounce up to a certain point. Here's how that can be um, negated. Here's how you can screw that part up too. So if I click on the output path selector, let's say I have multiple analog outputs connecting to my speakers. So maybe lines one and two had also gone to another uh, uh, monitor path in my studio. Well, anything, when I choose my bounce, I'm going to choose an output path. So whatever I'm hearing out of monitors left and right, that's what is going to be considered my bounce path once I actually go and bounce. And I always like to choose that um, output path. That way we're sure that whatever we're hearing is what's going to be included in the bounce. 
Another thing that's super important is to, to keep in mind is that if you're using a master fader, you don't want to put a fade out on your master fader, okay? You can fade the other tracks, maybe even include a, a sub mix or, or a, um, a, a aux input track, axial mix bus, and maybe even get rid of the master fader altogether. Let me tell you why. Every track in Pro Tools, with the exception of the master fader, has pre-fader inserts every track in pro tools with the exception of the master fader has pre-fader inserts now what does that mean that means that the level going into my inserts my plugins on the track are not dependent on the level of the fader to where the tracks output is not changing the level going into any of the processors on those tracks this includes every single track in pro tools except for master fader now a master fader is different because the inserts on master fader tracks are actually processed post fader now this gives you a unique advantage to where let's say you have a mix that is overall a little hot or a little loud and you want to do processing on them you can use the master fader to change the level going into the processors that you have on that master fader track now here's why i say you don't want to do any fade outs or anything like that on that master fader track simply because with that ability to change the level going into the processors as you are um doing that fade out right if i open up my my limiter here i'm not going to play it but you guys can can get the idea here basically if i start to matter of fact i will let me uh play something i am going to play something here and i'm just turn it down we're going to mute that we're going to turn this down okay so you see the level that I have going into my master fader. Let me actually back this up a little bit. Give us a little time. All right, so I have my L2 limiter. Got my L2 limiter, right? And I'm getting a little bit of limiting on this overall B. I'm going to just turn, squash this a little more. This will be a little bit more dramatic, okay? So we see where my signal level is coming. If I get to the end of my song and I want to bounce it down, I'm sorry, start to fade it out, watch what happens to that input level. So this is the input meter right here, right? As I start to fade down, the level going into the compressor is also changing. If I push this up, the level going into the compressor changes, okay? Now that lets me know that this fader has an effect on the level going into the processors on that channel. Thus, if I set my compression on my stereo bus perfectly, right, and I get it just how I want it, and then I do a fade out at the end of my song, during that fade out, my mix is gonna start falling apart from a compression standpoint, and all the work that I've done to get that uh, mix bus nice and tight, is gonna be pulled apart because of the post fader insert. So in it, a way to get around that is to use an aux input track or put the fades directly on the other tracks in your session. I'll go right up to the file menu and choose bounce mix. This will open up my bounce mix dialog box here. And a couple of things that we wanna make sure that we do here. First, make sure that you choose a name for the file. You can choose the file type. So um, of course I like to go with the wave, but maybe you wanna go directly to MP3 for some reason, that's cool too the mix source now this is what we're going to be listening to so i always go with that physical output in that main stereo path that you've been listening to as you've been mixing that's what you want to choose as the mix source while you're bouncing when it comes down to the audio super important to choose the file format to be interleaved if we choose mono that'll take all the stereo work that we did and basically fold it together and get rid of all of the stereo information multiple mono will give us two separate files a file for the left channel and a file for the right channel we don't want that we just want one interleaved stereo file so that's what we're going to choose interleaved um as far as bit depth and sample rate that's going to be dependent on the um the medium that you're going to be using the bounce file on um, if you're going to streaming or something like that you can keep it at 24 bit 48 kilohertz as you should be recording in that session and go ahead and choose a destination you can if you choose session folder this will put a bounced file in the bounce files folder of the session file folder that you just uh created for this session all right um yeah then you hit bounce 
this little button down here where it says offline this determines whether the bounce will be in real time so if your song is three minutes and it's uh in real time it's going to take three minutes to complete the bounce if you go offline it will be a slightly faster than normal bounce all right then you hit bounce and then that thing starts bouncing you can cancel it if you need to all right youtube i'm waving Wayne from wavingway.com hope you have found this to be bouncing <laughs> Make sure you drop down in the comments. Let me know what you think about these bouncing techniques. And visit the website, wavywayne.com, for more tools to help you record and mix better and faster. Be dope.